Yes, are we ready to start? Or getting ready at least. Um, on Friday, we will have a guest lecturer from Stottoil, Örjan Pedersen, and he will talk about how you can actually use some of this we've been talking about in the lectures in, well, real life, or at least in Stottoil. But before this, I will start, um, well, lecturing about drill strings. So this is based on a uh, note by uh, Sigve Hovda, a uh, professor at this um, department. Uh, you can find the notes, uh, I think I've uploaded in both Blackboard and Slack again. So it has a bit of advanced math, but please try to, well, at least pretend to understand some of it. So we will have a uh, model for a drill string, which is fairly simple. We have, well, this is the uh, top. We are going down. So well walls going vertically down. And then we will have our drill pipe with different sections Oops, going down. So the red part here, this is supposed to illustrate the uh, pipe, the green bit, these are the no, well walls, yes. Oh. Walls, and down here you will have the drill bit. See. Drill bit. So this is the start, and we would have Z going downwards as the positive direction of this. So this is more like the physical model. We will construct a more mathemat mathematical model of this using blocks of mass and springs. So we will have, let's see, springs can be blue here. And then we would have a block of mass here. And a block of mass, and a new string, and so on and so forth. We will label this first string K1. K1, and then we have M1 in the middle there. We have a, well, I need more of them. So it's masses and springs all the way down. No. So this continues. That's it. Here. Mm, a new one. So this is going to be our starting point for the mathematical model. And then you would have the last one, let's see, down here. So the one at the bottom, we are going to call this MN, so mass number N. And then KN, if this is MI, then this is KI, KI minus 1. M I minus one, M I plus one, K I plus one. And then we will have a distance between all of these. We're going to call this H. Should go from the mass center, like so. And then these will have properties like a radius, and we'll say that later that the mass units they are just in one point. They don't have any length in this direction. So to list our assumptions, the drill string is modeled by n blocks. by 
my n blocks, which are connected by these uh, springs. By springs. And each of these springs obey Hooke's law. Spring which is a fairly okay assumption, which means that the force equals the spring constant k and the displacement x. Where we have, let's see, x here, this is and k is the spring constant. And also that each block has a negligible length. Is that what I used? Yep. So that means that, I mean, I've modeled them as blocks here, but we are assuming that the length of them is basically zero or infinitesimal. So. Block has zero length. <laughs> Which means that the distance between each of these blocks are points of mass. Uh, so distance between S H, which is L divided by the number. So I forgot to add this. So the length of a drill pipe is L, like big L, like so. And if we have N of these blocks, then the distance between in each block assuming the length of the block is zero, so this is a mathematical model, but it actually works, then the distance between them is h. So in order to illustrate this better, maybe, you would have a block here and here. So this would be m1, m2. Like so, k1 and k2 and downwards. That is perhaps a better picture than this for assumptions. And then also that they do have a, um, what do we call it, a cross section. So they have a different radius they can have. So this is the account for the different cross-section of the pipe. So you start with a pipe of a big cross-section, and then you have to diminish the cross-section as long as, as the further down you go. And also that the springs are free to rotate with respect to the box. So if you have a drill string down here, they are free to rotate as much as they want in this direction without introducing, well, angular momentum.
So with respect to the blocks. Which means no angular momentum. So then, does this seem like fair assumptions for your drill string? Well, it does make the iteration a bit easier. So just keep in mind all of these assumptions. Next, we will give the block positions. So there will be a lot of bookkeeping here. Each of them will have a uh, coordinate Q, dependent on time. And then we have the or origin or oracle. It's chosen such that it starts in zero. of zero is zero. So this is just q zero here. And then we have the block coordinate. So this is going to be q i of t for block number i, i at time t. So each of these blocks, they can move. Well, it's going to be kind of dependent, but you could have two blocks moving in um, like, like so, or they could be synchronized, or I guess it's called anti-synchronized, or just randomly up and down, which is why we need a coordinate for each of the blocks. Mm. Yep. Some block coordinates. And then we'll see that in equilibrium, this is when you don't have any force in the system. We will have that the springs, so the springs are not in compression or tension, they're just well, there. Then it's, this is given by qi of t equals index i times the length h. So when there's no forces in the system, everything is just balanced. This is slightly unrealistic, or it is unrealistic. Then this one will have well, this one will have position position h because while well, the length there is h, this one will have position two h, and then i minus one h, and so on. And this is only an equilibrium. And then we'll denote the displacement from equilibrium as see. Uh, we need some more space. So Q of T, Q I of T equals I H plus small Q I of T. So this small Q I denotes the well relative displacement of the uh, the block number i. So this means that the uh, well, the physical state of the drill string. Oops.
as determined by this big Q of T, so no index here, and all of the small displacements QI of T. Bookkeeping. And then, which kind of forces acts on each block? Well, it's going to be, you have some forces acting on the first block, which are, well, unique, you could say. And then for everyone above one, all the way down to n, because where it's not connected to anything below, they will have the same expression for the force. So if I could just remove this as well. So, let's see. The first block. That shows up. So this is MI. We have a string there. This is K1, and we have K2 down here. And then we have all the forces in white. So we will have some kind of spring force going up here. We're going to denote this F1. And then we have F2, well, that's the spring force this way. Two, can you see this down here? Then we would have the gravity pulling on this block. F3. I'm just going to call this, let's see. Gravity. This one is a spring force. This one is a spring force. Then we have a fourth force. Four, which we will call well, functional forces. So you are driving the system, so we need a way to express this. So we just call this functional forces. And we will come back to this F4. Yes, on the drill string from, well, the drill. of these forces. Let's go systematically through them. So F1, this is a spring force. And well, we know what this is. This is displacements times the spring constant minus K1, and then the change, so delta Z. This would be called the minus K1. So minus here is because, well, the direction is pointing up. We have defined the positive direction to be down, which is where the minus comes from. 
small q1, so this is displacement minus, well, the position of the drill. F2, this is also spring force. Two. So this is K2 delta Z. And this one is positive because it's pointing downwards, which we have defined as a positive direction. Q2 minus Q1. And then the force of gravity. And here we will also include the buoyancy. So this is going to be M1 times gravity times some kind of buoyancy factor, B1. So B1, I have to see how this is spelled. Buoyancy, yeah. Factor. And these are also bi is equal to one, except where the diameter of the pipe is changing. So we have the pipe going like this. If this is divided into, so we're going back and forth for models now. So here you would all have uh, bi equals to one in this region, but for this one, b is not equal to one because you would have some buoyancy there. And down here again, you would have bi equals to one. Yeah. And then we have this mysterious F4. Which, well, we're going to have a placeholder. Just call it R1. It remains to be found. Mm. Well, what's the next move? Well, to use Newton's second law. <coughs> so, N2, which states that Mass times acceleration is the same as the sum of the forces. Like so, so in this case, well, we have to sum all of this F1, 2, 3, and 4. This gives us M1, Q1. So this is going to be the double time derivative with two dots over it. Well, K1, no, K1, F1 is minus K1, Q1 minus big Q. And well, these are time dependent, but in order to save some time, then I'm not going to write it if it's time dependent. K2, K2 minus Q1 plus M1 G B one plus this mysterious R one. Well I'm gonna do something mysterious right now. I'm gonna set this equal to zero M1 G B one minus K1, Q1 minus big Q plus K2, Q2 minus Q1. This should all be 
zero. Well, that's rare. Redefining the laws of physics. So this is for the first block. Uh, the second block is going to be similar. So have you caught up with me on this? Can I just modify this drawing? Uh, guess not. Yeah, it should be one here. This? Yes, it should be one. Okay. Yeah. And the R1 is zero or? No, we will come back to it. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I, I forgot R here as well. Uh, I guess I did. Yes, I forgot. This R1 equals zero. Yeah, then we have everything. So that's the reason that block number i isn't much different. So instead of first block, it's going to be block i. So what do we need to change for this to be, instead of the first block, block well, I. Well, this is K I. This is K I plus one. And well, um, I. Is there something else? No, I don't think so. So that's basically all we have to change here. But I will write this on you. Um, so for F1 here, instead of having Q1 and K1, we will have well, minus K I Q I minus Q I minus one, and we would have K I plus one, Q I plus one minus Q I. This one, well, well we have M I G B I and R. I instead. So that's basically the same. But again, N2 and this, which is the most important bit, N2 for block I is going to be, I'm going to have this in orange, minus M. I Q I double dot plus M I G B I minus K I Q I minus Q I minus one plus K I plus one Q I plus one minus Q I plus R I equals zero. And this is for two I and minus one. Like so. And then we only have 
one more block to worry about. And well, it has a spring here, but nothing going down here, which means you have the forces acting on it, which is F1, spring force, F2, which is the gravity and then this driving force, F. Uh, I guess it's better if you just call it F4, like so. Kn. And again, we use Newton here, so the sum of forces, and we get minus M N Q N plus N G B N minus K N Q N minus Q N minus one plus this R N. So if you know only had this R we could actually describe this whole system. But this R is, well, hairy, to say the least. Hmm? Oh, OK, yeah, like so. Well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, F3 if you want to be yeah, consistent. I mean, these are just placeholders anyway to get this one. So the important bit now is this one for the first, this one for the middle bits, and this one for the last one. <laughs> then you have all the forces. Then we'll do this. R, which is viscous forces. Viscosity is always not nice. Yeah. Well, maybe not always, but it introduces a lot of problems. This Ri, this is this viscous friction forces. This is Ri. So we're going to see when this string is, or this drill string, is vibrating up and down. I was, I was it's vibrating up and down, it will shake the um, the mud holding it. So the mud will try to work against the force of the drill moving. Um, and then it will dampen it in some fashion, which is these RIs. So we'll have some assumption on this friction force, and that is that well, was assumptions. Uh, 
and that is that the whoops, drill mud is Newtonian. Which means that well, it's a Newtonian liquid. So, have you ever seen a non-Newtonian liquid? So, if you take cornstarch and you uh, take your hand on it slowly, you would sink into it. But if you hit it hard, quick, then it would be like a solid. So, it it behaves different. A liquid or a fluid that behaves differently in different time scales is a non-Newtonian liquid. So here we just assume that it behaves the same on all time scales. For instance, water, well, perfect Newtonian liquid. So if we assume this Newtonian um, liquid, then the flow is laminar. This is a very perfect world. We could have, I don't know, spherical cows in a vacuum. Lemur, steady, and axial, symmetric. Which means that the mud will flow, well, the same down the shaft of the drill string or borehole, or what you want to say it. Also, all radial and swirl components are zero. Stokes on a very, well, not very, but a simpler form. But went up. Stokes says that the pressure PI oops, in the well is only a function of the actual coordinate. Recall R or RI. Actually, just R to begin with. So we have 1 over R. This is now your Stokes. The, the R, R, U, I. The R equals one over mu. This is the viscosity. The P I Z minus rho and G. So, what are all of these? This The distance from the center of the hole, of the hole is from the hole. Yep. This thing, the UI. That's the actual. Actually, the velocity component of a fluid particle component particle 
Like so. This one. This the viscosity. So honey that has high viscosity and water low viscosity. And this rho m med density. C T. Like so. Uh, yes, it would, yes. Also depth. Yeah, this is kind of, yeah. <laughs> it should also be depth here. And the depth Z as well. Well, it depends on this. So this uh, ui, this is related to the block and spring at position i. Uh, and well, it's only a function of this r and how long it's at. Uh, we could then integrate this twice with respect to r. So and solve for this ui. Twice W R T to R, and we get U I of R equals D P at position I. Oh, this is changing by depth minus rho M G over for mu all squared plus some constants. So this is big C1, natural logarithm of the radial position, and C2. And then we'll call this bit uh, big U i. So the problem with this node is that it has a lot of different constants. I'm going to use some different letters, but it, I'm going to be consistent in my lectures. And it should be easy to compare them with the notes, hopefully. And this C1 and C2, they can be determined via the boundary conditions of your problem. Ooh. So I guess this is the last, yep. So imagine an annulus. So we will have the inner ring. This is the drill string. And then this is the borehole wall. And if you want, this is solid all around. And then we have big R. So this is the diameter of your hole. And then we have well, I have to double check this. Alpha i r. No, this is supposed to be from here. Alpha i r. I will double check this. And then here you have your fluid or mud, because you call it drill mud. Drill mud and the drill string inside here. Yes. 
think that's a good place to take a 15 minute break. Starting from this annulus.